David, and it's Phil. Yo. And tonight we've got beer. Just a couple. Driving. Just a couple. We're both driving tonight, so we've got to be on my best. Yeah, that, in fact, that could potentially put you over. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like I say, uh, nobody's drinking here. Nobody's <laughs> driving. We've just got <laughs> we've just got plenty of water, <laughs> and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we've just. We'll be honest with you guys, right? What am I, American or something? We'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> we'll be honest with you listeners, you folks. We did just tr- try and record an Illuminati special. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it turned out to be the biggest pile of... Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't the biggest pile of shit, but it was like... No, it wasn't. It was, it was just a case of... If, if you weren't like into it, it would be like, what the fuck have they just talked about yeah. for 40 minutes? <laughs> we didn't make just it... Just jump from one thing to the next, yeah. like, in a matter of seconds. Like... <laughs> <laughs> from the Council of Thirteen to the religious connections that they have to the, the yeah. Freemasons and things like that and jumping all over the place we need to learn how to structure better I think yeah structure and possibly a little bit more education on the topic <laughs> <laughs> that might help it would probably help a little bit that might help it was pretty funny though because um, David after 40 minutes was just like right we want to take a break yeah let's take a break and I was like oh so how long has that been and I was like oh 39 minutes I was like so he blatantly fucking says that as a failure then <laughs> so I was just like yeah he's bailed I totally bailed <laughs> I was just I was getting a feeling you know just like three quarters in I just thought right at the beginning I thought do I stop this and start again yeah because it was really jumpy and then three quarters of the way through I thought it's game over here like yeah it, it died well I, I died. thought I knew more than I actually do yes I'm guilty of that as well. I thought I knew loads about the Illuminati. Turns out I was just full of bullshit. Yeah, we're totally just relying on a couple of Google images <laughs> to, to really help out. <laughs> I think if it wasn't for the Google images, we would have kind of been stuck there. Uh, the Illuminati. Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, if, we, if we didn't have the internet, yeah, we'd be absolutely fucked. <laughs> well and truly screwed over. So I think this is a lesson that we need to do more research. More, oh, definitely. Definitely, as opposed to my fucking personal attempt at researching last night, which was uh, just me sitting at the back door, pissed, li- <laughs> listening to some random David Ike videos, <laughs> taking the shittest notes ever. It's probably why I didn't end up getting my degree, because I'm so shit at the learning. What what degree? What did, I, what did I study? Yeah. For literally a year and a half business. Did you? <laughs> your, your, your standard uh, pointless degree. Yeah. That I, I did not know. Well, there's a little bit of background. Come on, I, I, I'm in the same boat as what I was then. Don't know what the fuck I want to do with my life at all. And I was just like, oh, right, well, got an A in business, mm-hmm. uh, A level. So I was like, might as well fucking study that then. <laughs> no, that A, that's, that's bullshit. I didn't fucking try that hard. I got a B. Got a B. And, uh, B's and, not and, bad. And so I went there, went, went to Manchester for uni. The shit one as well, not, not the fucking real University of Manchester. <laughs> and... Uh, Proceeded to just spend all my student loan on drink, takeaway food and cannabis. Nice. And had to drop out <laughs> and move back home because <laughs> I ran out of money. Uh, wow. And I've been living the high life ever since. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my uh, that's my uni experience. I'm considering going to going to uni, and I'm 26. Right. How do you do that? Like as a as a fully grown man now. Well, for me, I would have to do a. A course, you know, one of the courses where it kind of... Like a foundation type of thing? Yeah, no, it's like, yeah, it's like your A-levels, it's like basically doing that again. I forgot what yeah. to call them. Oh, I can't remember, I was just I was just talking about it the, the other day as well. Mm-hmm. But I, I probably have to do that and then it's probably study for another three or four years. I mean, that's taking us to 30 plus. So I'm then 26 now. On. How do you... How do you work around that then, work-wise? That's the thing, I mean. So you have it'd probably be a case of part time job, full time education. Fuck, that's a massive, like, yeah. responsibility, isn't it? I might have to do that, I might not, because a lot of jobs that I want, they like you to have a. So, what kind of stuff are you looking to, to a lot get of in? Cons- conservation work and environmental projects, that kind of thing. So, the, the. A lot of them like you to have a degree in, like, ecology or conservation sciences. But this course you're doing now. Yeah. It's like apprenticeship, is that? It's not a guaranteed job at the end of it. Huh. But so is, that, is that like technically better since it's fucking hands on? It should be, <laughs> in reality. You know? Cause you're, yeah, you're, I mean, there's. You're in the field, literally. On paper, they probably like you to have a 
a degree but in reality it's about the experience I think because the degree is fine but if you haven't got the experience and I'm hoping that this traineeship will give us the experience mm-hmm. to be able to go ahead I mean I applied for a job yesterday which one of the, one of the criteria was that you kind of need a degree but I just thought what's the harm in trying to apply for it so you're applying for jobs well, I've applied for and, one and what would happen if you got it would you have to quit this traineeship yeah ah. but I would get units the units I've completed so far I'll be marked down for and then if I can, if I get a chance to finish the course at any time I can come back and pick up from where I left off oh right, right. so how long uh, is the thing you're on at the minute how long is that going to last it's 10 months it finishes on 30th of January next year Oh, right. I, I didn't know if it was like a, like a two-year thing or something like no, that. No, just ten months. Oh, that's not bad then. That's pretty sweet. Ten months and it's paid. Yeah. Nice. Which is really damn good. It's just really nice, but it's just so un- unpredictable. I mean, ugh. Just, you just, it's so hard to get a job now and to get a job you really want, it's even harder. Mm-hmm. So what would you like be doing as a, as a com- conservationist? Is that, is that even a fucking job title? A Con- conservation? Probably a conservation ranger or something like that. And, w- and what do they do exactly? Like what? General conservation in terms of species and habitat management. So you have to like really have a in-depth knowledge of wildlife. Like, oh, this shit's in danger. This shit, yeah. this shit could probably do with breeding a little more often. So it's I'd probably it's probably not essential, but yeah, to a degree, you need you do need knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think I've got. I mean, I've always been interested in wildlife. So who's that, like, through? Like, it depends. It council could be, or something? No, like. well, it could be. It can be like, some councils have countryside teams. Uh-huh. That do the nature reserves. We've got the Wildlife Trust. Uh, there's the National Trust. There's the Forestry Commission. Woodlands Agency. RSPB. All of them do the sorts of jobs I'm looking for. Uh-huh. It's just hard to get in. Really hard to get in. Yeah? Oh, yeah especially RSPB, yeah. A hard one to get in yeah. What's that Royal Society of Protection of Birds? That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, that's the what it's dead competitive. Loads of people own it though. Dead competitive. Really competitive to get into and I think that they make you do I was talking to a girl yesterday and they make you do like a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation of things as part of your interview and i quite I probably quite enjoy that actually. Yeah, I mean meant that. But I mean it depends if it's something you get to choose or if it's a subject they give you. Oh. Ah. So Right, I want you to do this presentation on grass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about grass. <laughs> I know a bit. Oh, I do. I am. We were learning the other week about grasses and wildflowers. Is there any, uh, like, psychedelic... Sub- it's not substances. Like, psychedelic uh, plants or, like, fungi that grows. I know that's, uh, like, in the UK, I'm on about... Um, I know that you've got psilocybe... Ah, oh, I'm not sure exactly what it is. The Liberty Caps, basically. That is magic mushrooms that grow in Britain. I forget which type it is, exactly. I haven't studied fungi yet. <laughs> but is there, is there any other... I know like, a few types. Uh, the fly, fly agaric one. So that, that actually grows in Lake Britain? Oh, fly agaric, yeah, yeah. That grows, that grows in Durham. There's places in Durham you can get that. Ah, uh-huh. fuck. Bound to be able to get it in Northumberland as well, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> You're going to go foraging, sir? You, you could... <laughs> With you, <laughs> you're coming really fucking early. <laughs> we can make some more fucking money here, man. <laughs> I don't know if there's a massive market for um, Amanita's like, <laughs> for you know, the market of at least one. And it's really interesting. Right <laughs> Learn about mushrooms and things. I mean, we haven't really covered them yet, but do you know that mushroom spores can travel in a vacuum, like through space? No, that's not what I mean. Can survive in a vacuum. I'd heard about that. Like or support, something like that. Supposedly, <laughs> Because apparently they're more alien than yeah. sort of anything else on the planet. Like they could have came here yeah. from another planet on a meteorite yeah. or something like that. Another fucking weird thing about them is uh, they're actually, um, I think it's I think the correct term would be genetically, I think they're genetically closer to humans than they actually are to plants. How strange is that? That's fucking that's weird. That's really weird. That. Yeah. Really interesting. But yeah, like that's, that's an idea that like they could potentially... Come from outer space. <laughs> imagine, if they, imagine if they did. Right, and then you think about the kind of like experience that you get when you drop some mushrooms, right? Mm. And you and you feel it's like just connectedness with with the universe, like all is one type thing. Yeah. 
then that would be interesting if aliens did like send that shit like just like right yeah just fucking catapult some spores into space yeah <laughs> and see where it fucking lands and it lands on our dumb fucking planet and the apes that we are like uh, like well what's that <laughs> munch all that and like whoa take it in whoa. <laughs> yeah whoa. it's like the stoned ape theory isn't it yeah McKenna yeah that's an interesting one you obviously know more about McKenna than me but yeah probably forgot it all because Keep smoking dope every time I listen to him and every time I read his books. Not good for your short term memory. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that uh, well, as I understand it, the stunned ape theory is pretty much all about apes experimenting with like new food sources, stumbling across some, some mighty psychedelic mushrooms, mushrooms yeah. um, realizing that of the many effects, one of the effects is that it can help with like. At like low doses can help uh, with, I think, hand eye coordination. Right. So that'd be all right, like hunting wise, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Be you know, um, makes people uh, pretty horny. <laughs> yeah. As well, ah, I can make it's it's good for for fucking. It's good uh, for fucking. Yeah, real fungi is good, good for, for fucking. fucking. Aye, isn't that weird? Because if someone had the fungus, you uh, wouldn't want to fuck them. <laughs> <No. laughs> a bit ironic there. Um, uh, but yeah, so basically. Uh, McKenna th- thinks that when apes experimented with with the mushrooms, mm-hmm. this is what he attributes like that. You know, the the human brain size like doubled in a period of like a hundred thousand years. Yeah. Supposedly, he he puts it down to that, which would be pretty fascinating if that was the case. And uh, and he and he, he suggests that that's where we got like language from, like human language. Uh, it's it's from experiment experiment with mushrooms like over, over I wonder how, I wonder how long that would take going from being if that's true going from being a wild ape starting to experiment with mushrooms and then how many generations it would take before that real change was like evident yeah uh, it must have taken like, quite a few it thousand away, years because like a couple of trips isn't going to do anything but yeah. if it becomes like a ritual or just becomes part of the feeding habits where they just keep taking it yeah then and it spreads I know. Then I mean, it's just going to totally Im- impact upon the the minds, and but I just wonder, I wonder how long how long that would take mm-hmm. to take effect and become like a natural instinct for them, and it change their perceptions and. Yeah, I I don't think anybody can like answer that at the minute. I don't think there's. Enough. I suppose because nobody nobody really knows if it's true or not. Ah, uh, yeah, there's just no one. Yeah, See, there's no way of evidence uh, testing to tell you one way or the other. I don't think, but. It's an interesting theory, like, the idea that... Because if you look at the brain, which uh, I've never done, because I'm not a fucking neuroscientist or anything, <laughs> but, like, we have these receptor sites in my brain, which, like, uh, allow these chemicals, like, um, dimethyltryptamine, DMT, like, uh, psychedelic compounds to, like, fit nice and neatly in, in our brains. It's, it's almost as if we're, like... <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's what we might have. It's a store <laughs> for them. Yeah? Yeah. And, and, and how... What bodies actually get like a trip out of them you don't with DMT like certain stuff you actually have to have someone else what they call an MAOI uh, is it MAO MAO inhibitor mm-hmm. a bit of a tangent yeah but if uh, if you just take DMT it's not it's not actually orally active so you would have to have this other plant like compound to, to like so you've got to mix uh, the two together uh, yeah to, to allow it to actually become like a like, like activate in your brain otherwise I think your body would just like be like yeah fuck this yeah. it would just like shut it down but you can take something <laughs> alongside it and you get the craziest trip ever this is what ayahuasca is what I'm talking about this is like the, that's the ayahuasca experience yeah because um, ayahuasca is basically a a brew uh, which contains a, a leaf which will have like DMT in it and then this vine that contains the MEO inhibitor and the two together you, like, you put them both together and, and that it'll, it'll activate the DMT and allow you to trip out like crazy and see fucking your ancestors and fucking the, the goddesses of the freaking jungle and yeah. fuck knows well but it's crazy how humans figured that out tens of thousands of years ago mm-hmm. like of all the different plants um, in the in the jungle because it's like the Amazon essentially where, where you get this broom Mm-hmm. And the tribes uh, like experiment with it, but for all the different like combinations of plants, how the fucking hell did they figure out? Oh yeah, that leaf with with that vine, brew it for fucking yeah. hours, equals an amazing trip. Isn't that weird? 
It's, pre- <laughs> it's pretty amazing, really. Yeah, I, I, I think that's pretty <laughs> fascinating how they're like. Did they, did they just sit there constantly going, oh, right? Just take that leaf now, <laughs> that vine, that leaf with that leaf. Uh, they claim that it was the the, the goddesses, uh, the goddess that that actually told them to mix mm. that with that, which is interesting. Which makes you think, who's the goddesses? Yeah. Mother Gaia. <laughs> Mother Gaia, people from space? Or... Ah, yeah, yeah. What do you think yeah, about, about the, the human race? And Do you think we were sort of planted here? Or do you, do you think that something came down and interacted with when disappeared? Do you think it's all a load of shit? Or do you think that we just evolved from apes and that's kind of it? I think the whole thing is just like... The whole like evolution of life on this planet is just so fucking crazy that there's nothing that sounds crazier. So all the like the different scenarios that you've described there, none of them sound particularly crazy because the idea of life just spontaneously occurring on a like on a cooling planet is fucking absolutely mental in itself, isn't it? Yeah. So unfortunately, I I don't really have an opinion. <laughs> I'd love to of like where where we came from, you know? Like I, I don't I just fucking don't know, man. <laughs> I, I'd love to be a hundred percent that aliens that came down and interacted with one. So just like. Just using the very limited form of human logic, uh-huh. I always think, if they did that, then why did they fuck off? Did, if they were clever enough to get here, yeah, but they're not clever enough to see that we're going to eventually figure out how to make nuclear weapons. <laughs> and when they're not clever enough to figure out that would definitely end up using them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unlucky Nagasaki. <laughs> Phil, you're spoiling my theory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's just, it, it amazes me. There's so many... So, you know, there's so many things that can point towards that being the case and there's things that kind of go against that evidence and it's just amazing it, it's just the, the idea of space and where we are and what we're on this planet that that just it blows my mind man I can't deal with it it's fucking unbelievable deal with it. and what if we're like the prime we're at the prime time for life on a planet right now maybe not right now but even, I mean like a few million years this planet's been habitable sort of thing what like in terms of just like in terms the planet of flourishing with vegetation and yeah, just in terms in terms of life. Yeah. What if all the other planets in the galaxy, eventually, if they can and they do, if they do form the same way as ours, what if all the life grows the same? Yes, I've thought that in the same structure. That, that's exactly like uh, that's precisely what I've, what I've thought about loads, uh, and that there's no such thing as like these, like, ten foot like skinny limbed aliens. It's just. No, no, it's, it's just uh, after so many millions of years, if, if it still exists, they haven't been hit by an asteroid. It's, it's just humans. Yeah. Uh, that's just what you get. Humans. What if it's just us in the galaxy? Yeah. The same sort of evolutionary path. Yeah. Every time. Until that planet dies or until humans evolve into something yeah. slightly more yeah, advanced. Wouldn't it be fucking horrible if it was just a case of life can only ever advance to nukes, uh, like death by nukes, because culture can never actually advance far enough. To cope with having the nukes, yeah, but like, but like, brain size wise, we could advance much further. Uh-huh. But just be, culture always holds humans back. That that'd be fucking horrible. Like, it would if, be if, it if, just... if that was like a truth to find out. That'd be like, oh, that is disgusting. Though That's... life, life always ends up nuking itself. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really depressing thought, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't like believe that. That's the case. Like, but it, it's an interesting thing to think about. Like, fuck the idea of all life being kind of uniform. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I love that idea. That like that. That's just, and not even like parallel universe-wise, where there's like you know versions of us. Yeah. In infinity, mm-hmm. uh, just making slightly different choices, uh, but like just the idea of, yeah, like humans, but in the Andromeda galaxy, mm-hmm. people that look exactly the same, or apes that are just starting to like experiment with mushrooms now, mm-hmm. because that's how you know like if things just generally develop the same way. Um, but then, then it would be like, would it only be planets in this like Goldilocks range, you know, uh-huh. like i.e. so far from the sun? Is it only planets that like exist within that like orbit that would be able to facilitate and like allow for life? Yeah. Or could you get life on further out planets, yeah, or like, closer like, in planets to uh-huh. the suns? And yeah, because then if you could, then I would imagine life would look totally different. I suppose know? it would have to. It would adapt. Yeah, and even um, like say larger planets. Mm-hmm. Like what about like a like a version of Earth? Like say a planet that was the same distance away from the sun as what we are. Yeah. But it was like the size of Jupiter. Well, not as big as that, but like 
but you know a few times bigger than Earth, mm-hmm. and its gravity's gonna be like much stronger. So what would life look like then? But would people be much smaller? Would things be much smaller? You know? I don't know. And there's always the, there's always the case that what if that planet doesn't have a moon, mm-hmm. and how that I will don't... affect the planet? That's the uh, I I heard ages ago that the moon's like so unbelievably important to life actually um, existing in the first place because it keeps us stable. Yeah. Um, it keeps us like spinning on one axis type thing, as opposed to just like you get in a place where the the temperature goes from like Saharan desert to Arctic within like a space of a couple of days. Because mm-hmm. supposedly I think Mars. Uh, spins a bit erratically like that where you can get like these massive extremes and they said that if you had these extremes then it would be too much for like life to emerge and cope with is it not day and night on Mars like during the day it's really really hot and during night it's ridiculously cold uh, potentially I I'm sure because yeah. I was I was programs on all last weekend about space and I'm sure that was one of the points they said they also said that the moon they think was a smaller object that smashed into earth yeah and then bounced off and yep. just basically hung around mm-hmm. yeah and that, that's where like i don't like understand well obviously i know fuck all about like physics <laughs> to begin with but like i just don't understand how the the moon doesn't just like after it like smashed into the earth mm. why didn't it just fuck off i think it was earth's gravity but then if gravity's so fucking special <laughs> Why don't why doesn't the sun suck us in? Because it's like you know what I mean. Like yeah. I don't, I just don't understand that at all. Like I'm, mind is being blown right now. <laughs> we really don't know much about space. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like if you yeah. keep thinking, the, the moon, as it turns out, is supposedly uh, uh, getting like further away from the Earth by like one inch a year. That that's just something I heard from Neil deGrasse Tyson about ten years ago in one of the yeah. space documentaries. And that actually, that one day it will eventually just fling off into space. <laughs> just like away from the gravity and just... Yeah, eventually it'll just be like... It'll just get like uh, catapulted out of its well, that, orbit. In that case, the worry is that it's going to come back. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and Hitler. I put it only travelling like a... Sh- uh, well, that would only happen if it like encountered the gravity of something else and then that like that flung, flung it back. Flung it out. Yeah. Imagine getting twatted by the moon again. <laughs> the, the moon disappears, Mars yeah. gets it, flings it out the uh, other side. Oh, for fuck's sake, the, the come fucking on. moon. Could you, bl- could you blow it up, do you think? With well, nukes, the moon. I, I, I wouldn't, we would just be fucked anyway if... Uh, oh, if yeah, if I lost the moon, if didn't if think about that. Yeah. What would happen if I lost the moon? The tides would, would go. Well, it, I think the Earth would just... Uh, like yeah it would go from being absolutely boiling during the day potentially mm-hmm. to oh fuck it's absolutely freezing we can't like cope with this at all my body's just gonna cope <laughs> you know it that's a be scary extreme. thought yeah but so, then is is there a point where all of a sudden it just disappears you know what I mean like does it get does it gradually do it where it's like alright oh, it's, it's not got as much of an effect on the earth now and, it's, and just like over tens of thousands of years, it's like, yeah, we're slowly dying out. Let's just fucking, let's wrap this shit up. <laughs> or, or does it just happen in an instant where it's like, like an elastic band snapping type of thing? Is it just like, right, yeah. now it's just got enough energy to fuck off. And then, <laughs> and, and then people gone. are like, imagine if you saw it as well, the night sky, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the moon just like disappearing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Planet oh, starts rocking. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. How scary is that? Oh, it'd be absolutely terrifying. I had a dream about that the other day. I had, uh, not about the moon, but I had a dream that the Earth stopped spinning. Um, and, and that, like, buildings and cars and everything just started, like, going, woof, like, past us. Now, yeah. in reality, that would be me as well. Like, I'm not fucking <laughs> special. Like, I would have went flying as well, in reality, because yeah. of the fucking speed of it and all that. Um, but it was a crazy, crazy <laughs> Armageddon dream. I get loads of Armageddon dreams. Do you? Yeah. Like, um, what? Just end of the world type scenario. Like. I like uh, like s- just space related fuck ups. Like th- the other day, it was me and my dad just like walking outside, and all of a sudden this meteor just goes <laughs> right in front. I was like, "Fucking hell, that was so close!" And then it just starts raining down these meteors, and we're trying to like dodge them and stuff. It was it was absolutely amazing. It was terrifying, <laughs> but it was amazing. And then I get these other weird like space like uh, like shooting down fucking weird like. I don't. I don't even know how to describe it. Like know. space debris, or nah, no, like like a like a like a wave, of, like horrible energy that's just slowly creeping creeping up on you. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's destroying that part of the earth. And if it gets and if it touches you, 
you're fucked. Like, that's what it is in my head. Like, oh, fuck, if I don't keep, like, running here. That's obviously, like, total psychological. That sounds like, but, uh, like a solar flare or something like that. Or is it just... It's, if you imagine, like... Wave energy? If you imagine, like, a constant beam of something right. that's, like, uh-huh. thousands of miles wide and it's just slowly, like, yeah. moving forward. Oh, it's horrible, man. Freak you out. Freaks you, it up. Did you, lo- did you look up, it. like, the meanings, though? Yeah, it's, uh... I, th- I think it's it's because I get the same kind of thing where it's like like a black cloud, mm-hmm. uh, like just total pitch black cloud, just slowly like engulfing everything, and and it's like terrifying. So it's uh, it's in the same kind of vein as that, and I think it's just a general, oh you're totally scared about being overcome by shit in your life. <laughs> you know, what I mean? yeah. not a particular person, but Dream, yeah. dreams are amazing. We'll we'll have to do it. A podcast purely on dreams, because definitely because uh, have I told you a lucid dream, which I'll save for that podcast. Have I ever mentioned that yet? I'm sure you told us a while yeah. back that you did lucid dream. Fucking amazing! It's amazing when you can control your dreams. Mm. It's amazing when you totally can... spiritual. <laughs> you just feel free, God. man. You just do what you want. Yeah, it's amazing. But we'll keep that for a special about dreams. Yeah, I'm gonna tell a dirty dream as well. If you had dirty Naughty dreams. dreams. Naughty I'm dreams. Must have done. <laughs> Everybody has naughty dreams. Just, uh, just tons of guys just whacking off. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, that wasn't a dream. That was uh, that happened here last week. That's actually on uh, that you, was... you point that cam. <laughs> <laughs> it was recorded. <laughs> in fact, it was just down the road there. Well, the dog is meat. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know about that? Uh, no comment. <laughs> I mean, that makes it sound a lot cooler than what I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm botting on that. I've just looked it up on the, online. <laughs> <laughs> those goddamn doggers. I would be one of those losers that uh, that kind of get a boner when it, come, when it comes to your turn. <laughs> right, Phil, you're up. So what's oh, the, oh, what, <laughs> what's the concept of, like behind dogging? I mean, is it just just it, sex for the pure fun and sake of sex? Is it just a case of people meeting up and fucking? Mm-hmm. That's it. Like, yeah, like anonymous, essentially. I mean, you probably get no people. It's probably like a little fucking community, isn't it? But, but yeah, like essentially, it's just like, all right, we don't know each other. We just want to fuck. Oh great, I'm a, my jigsaw piece fits your jigsaw piece, i.e., my cock in your vagina. So, let's complete the jigsaw. Wow. <laughs> and then get back in the car and go home to your wife and kids <laughs> <laughs> and shag them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's <laughs> Phil, he's a dirty motherfucker. Just yeah, ignore him. He's a freak. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're at that stage again. <laughs> Fuck. We're all podcasts doing it just end up here. <laughs> Let's do a time check. Oh, this is fucking 10 minutes. Is that right? What's up? This, this is actually 10 minutes less. <laughs> oh, fuck. We're going to end up doing this again and just after 90 minutes going. Yep. <laughs> we're at the same stage again. <laughs> <laughs> we're just free you know we're just mucking about on this one aren't we yeah it's just a fuck on <laughs> it was getting pretty pretty deep at one point like with the the idea of like other humans and that <laughs> space mm. that's got to be someone else to should talk about it's fucking space black holes <laughs> black holes my ass is a black hole <laughs> once you delve in you wear you never come out <laughs> Should we wrap this one up? Yeah, just a cheeky one. Just, che- a, just a cheeky little podcast. <laughs> How many subscribers do you think we'll get from this? Uh, I think we'll probably. Yeah. I, think, I think we'll probably lose the the, the, the two we've the got. The two that we're already on. One of which is me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ins- unsubscribing from this. That was a disgraceful podcast. How dare I? How dare I waste my time listening to it? <laughs> okay, folks. Take care of yourselves. And each other. <laughs> the famous words of Jerry Springer. Oh, no, it's, it's not gone. No, it's not. Oh, thank fuck for that. I was like, no, they're not going to use Jerry Springer now. <laughs> Should uh, we do a Jerry Springer episode? <laughs> we'll just play an episode of Jerry Springer, the audio clip, and then... Should we put one on now? Yes. Great idea. Jerry Springer. Fucking we are just there. loading a Jerry Springer clip. Bear with it. This is going to be guaranteed. Jerry Springer, fun. along with Cheetahs, is going to be some of the best, most shitty TV you can watch. <laughs> I mean, look at him, man. Come on. He's oh, oh, fantastic, man. Great guy. Who uh, really understands the world and people. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Wow. <laughs>
this woman, I met her on MySpace, yeah. and I, she's a very beautiful woman. She's tall, skinny, she's redhead, very beautiful woman. Why don't we do it this way? Because you've, you, you've never met her never before. Met her. Well, then I'm going to ask you to leave for a few Look months. at this guy with his ponytail and his flowers. <laughs> his complexion's like the colour of the moon, isn't it? <laughs> white. And his pants are the colour of shame. <laughs> Plainly a dude, isn't it? Yeah. It's a dude, isn't it? That's not bad looking for a dude. Hello, <laughs> oh god. Hello, oh, Jerry. Hello, Jerry. You met you met here bread here on the internet. Yes, we met on MySpace. Yes, we met on MySpace. What the hell are you looking at? I've got a dick. <laughs> and your secret is? I'm a man, Jerry. No! Oh shit, you're six foot four and fucking. <laughs> hands the size of shovels, you're a man? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> he blatantly would have absolutely just righted our fucking senses backstage. Really. Well, I fucking travel all the way down here. I'm sure they filmed this in the bowels of hell. <laughs> I'm sure they do, like. <laughs> All that industrial, that industrial feel it with. Maybe <laughs> Springer himself is Satan. Yeah. He just feeds off the fuckery, doesn't he? He does. Good to meet you. Look at that jawline. <laughs> Fuck me. It's like Superman. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> so fucking stage, but it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> that was class. That was incredible. <laughs> well, that's my night sorted. <laughs> Just watch the Jerry Springer <laughs> clips. And the words of Jerry Springer take care of yourselves and each other. Is that his words? Yeah, those are the words. Jerry's, Jerry's final thought, huh? Yeah. My final thought is, uh, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. The religious connections that they have to the, the yeah. Freemasons and things like that, and jumping all over the place. We need to learn how to structure better, I think. Yeah, structure and possibly a little bit more education on the topic. <laughs> <laughs> that might help. It would probably help a little bit. That might help. It was pretty funny though, because um, David, after 40 minutes, was just like, Right, we want to take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. And I was like, Oh, so how long has that been? It was like, Oh, 39 minutes. I was like, so he blatantly fucking says that as a failure then. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, he's bailed. <laughs> I totally bailed. <laughs> I was just, I was getting a feeling, you know, just like three quarters in, I just thought, right at the beginning, I thought, do I stop this and start again? Yeah. Because it was really jumpy and then three quarters of the way through, I thought, it's game over here. Like, Yeah, it, it died. Well, I, I thought I knew more than I actually do. Yes, I'm guilty of that as well. I thought I knew loads about the Illuminati. Turns out yeah. I was just full of bullshit. Yeah, we're totally just relying on a couple of Google images <laughs> to, to really help out. <laughs> I think if it wasn't for the Google images, we would have kind of been stuck there. Uh, the Illuminati. Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, if, we, if we didn't have the internet, yeah, we'd be absolutely fucked. <laughs> David and it's Phil. Yo. And tonight we've got beer. Just a couple. Driving. Just a couple. We're both driving tonight, so 
I've got to be on my best yeah, behaviour. In fact, I could potentially put you over. <laughs> yeah, like I say, uh, nobody's drinking here, nobody's <laughs> driving. We've just, got, we've just got plenty of water. <laughs> and we're good. <laughs> we've just... We'll be honest with you guys, right? What am I, American or something? We'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> we'll be honest with you listeners, you folks. We did just tr- try and record an Illuminati special. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it turned out to be the biggest pile of... Yeah, well, no, it wasn't the biggest pile of shit, but it was like... No, it wasn't. It was, it was just a case of... If, if you weren't like into it, it would be like, what the fuck have they just talked about yeah. for 40 minutes? <laughs> we didn't make just it... Just jump from one thing to the next, yeah. like, in a matter of seconds. Like... <laughs> <laughs> from the Council of Thirteen, to of money. Uh, wow! And I've been living the high life ever since. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my uh, that's my uni experience. I'm considering going to going to uni, and I'm 26. Right. How do you do that? Like as a as a fully grown man now? Well, for me, I would have to do a a course. You know, one of the courses where it kind of like a foundation type of thing. Yeah. No, it's like yeah, it's like your A levels. It's like basically doing that again I forgot what yeah. to call them oh, I can't remember I was just I was just talking about it the, the other day as well mm-hmm. but I, I probably have to do that and then it's probably study for another three or four years I mean that's taking us to 30 plus so I'm then, 26 now on. how do you how do you work around that then work wise that's the thing I mean so it'd you, probably be a case of part time job full time education fuck that's a massive like yeah. responsibility isn't it I might have to do that, I might not, because a lot of jobs that I want, they like you to have a... So what kind of stuff are you looking to, to get in there? Cons- conservation work and environmental projects, that kind of thing. So the, the... A lot of them like you to have a degree in like ecology or conservation sciences. But this course you're doing now... Yeah. It's like a pre- <laughs> well and truly screwed over. <laughs> so I think this is a lesson that we need to do more research. More, oh, definitely. Definitely, as opposed to my fucking personal attempt at researching last night, which was uh, just me sitting at the back door, pissed, li- <laughs> listening to some random David Ike videos, <laughs> taking the shittest notes ever. It's probably why I didn't end up getting my degree, because <laughs> I'm so shit at the learning. What what degree? What did, I, what did I study? Yeah. For literally a year and a half business. <laughs> did you? Your, your, your standard uh, pointless degree. Yeah. That I did not know. Well, there's a little bit of background. Go on, I, I, I'm in the same boat as what I was then. Don't know what the fuck I want to do with my life at all. And I was just like, oh, right, well, I've got an A in business, mm-hmm. uh, A level. So I was like, might as well fucking study that then. <laughs> no, that A, that's, that's bullshit. I didn't fucking try that hard. I've got a B. got a B. And, uh, and, not and, bad. and so I went there, went, went to Manchester for uni. The shit one as well, not, not the fucking real University of Manchester. <laughs> and. Uh, Proceeded to just spend all my student loan on drink, takeaway food and cannabis. Nice. And had to drop out <laughs> and move back home. <laughs> Cause I want ship, is that? It's not a guaranteed job at the end of it. Huh. But so is that, is that like technically better since it's fucking hands on? It should be <laughs> in reality, you know? Cause you're, yeah, you're, I mean, there's you're in the field literally. On paper, they they probably like you to have a a degree. But in reality, it's about the experience, I think. Because the degree is fine, but if you haven't got the experience, and I'm hoping that this traineeship will give us the experience mm-hmm. to be able to go ahead. I mean, I applied for a job yesterday, which one of the, one of the criteria was that you kind of need a degree, but I just thought, what's the harm in trying to apply for it? So you're applying for jobs? Well, I've applied for and one. And what would happen if you got it? Would you have to quit this traineeship? Yeah. Ah. But I would get... Units, the units I've completed so far, I'll be marked down for, and then if I can, if I get a chance to finish the course at any time, I can come back and pick up from where I left off. Oh, right. All right. So, how long uh, is the thing you're on at the minute? How long is that going to last? It's 10 months, it finishes on 30th of January next year. Oh, right. I, I didn't know if it was like a, like a two year thing or something. Like no, it's just 10 months. Oh, that's not bad then. That's pretty sweet. 10 months, and it's paid. Yeah. 